Welcome everyone to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and by this point in Thomas's Civil War career, he had been offered command of the Army of the Ohio, but had turned it down for the reasons outlined in the last video. But now, more changes were coming to the Army, and Thomas would find himself under the command of someone else. While the political leadership agreed that Buell had to go, they disagreed about whom to choose to replace him. Secretary of War Edwin Stanton favored Thomas, but Treasury Secretary Salmon Chase advocated giving the appointment to Major General William Stark Rosecrans instead. Rosecrans had served well in Western Virginia and had recently played an important role with Grant in turning back the attempted Confederate invasion of Western Tennessee. Rosecrans was also a political asset in that he was a Catholic and a native of Ohio. Most Catholics supported the Democratic Party and anti-administration sentiment and the Democrats were particularly strong in Ohio. Appointing Rosecrans to senior command would help build support among both of these important groups of voters. Thomas was the other logical choice, but his earlier refusal to take command from Buell worked against him. Besides making it seem that he did not really want an independent command, he created the impression that he approved of Buell's leadership during the Perryville campaign and would follow similar tactics if he were promoted. Rosecrans was chosen over Thomas, but there was a problem. Rosecrans was promoted to Major General after Thomas, given Thomas seniority over Rosecrans. This could cause confusion within the army, so Abraham Lincoln, with the stroke of a pen, signed an order moving back the date of Rosecrans' commission to give Rosecrans seniority. Rosecrans graduated from West Point two years after Thomas and had served in the army for nine years before leaving and joining the private sector. He became a wealthy inventor and engineer, but when the Civil War broke out, he offered his services to the Union. He was well-liked and intelligent, but he was easily excitable, especially under the stress of battle, which could make him erratic at times, which could cause confusion on the battlefield. Thomas was hurt by this choice and asked for a transfer to spare him the indignity of serving under an officer his junior. Shortly after he sent off that letter to the Secretary of War, Thomas met with Rosecrans and they had a deep discussion. Thomas told Rosecrans that he believed him to be a capable commander, but the decision hurt him. Rosecrans asked him to stay because he needed Thomas' skills. Thomas agreed to stay, but under one condition, that he wouldn't be named second in command like he had under Buell. He wanted his own command, and he received it. He took command of the center wing of the army. Rosecrans reportedly remarked that Thomas is a man of extraordinary character. Years ago at the military academy, I conceived that there were points of strong resemblance between his character and that of Washington. I was in the habit of calling him General Washington. The two got along well and Thomas became, according to Rosecrans, his chief counselor. Although not as aggressive as the Lincoln administration wanted, Rosecrans did launch an offensive in late December. Now the Army of the Cumberland marched southeast of Nashville and found the Confederate Army of Tennessee near Murfreesboro along Stones River. As Union forces assembled, Thomas occupied the center with about 15,000 men. His command was a lot larger, but a large portion was left behind to guard Nashville. Rosecrans planned for an attack on December 31st, but the Confederates attacked first, rolling up McCook's right wing and resulting in Thomas in the center attempting to hold together what remnants of divisions could be salvaged from the retreating Federals. It was part of Negley's division under Thomas that held the slaughter pen against repeated attacks by the rebels and only after Philip Sheridan's troops had pulled out because of a lack of ammunition did Thomas have to coordinate a withdrawal of his own troops. While his men defended the slaughter pen, Thomas organized one of his brigades under Colonel Moses Walker as a provost guard whose sole duty was to force the retreating Federals into organized groups to defend the Nashville Pike, the last Union defensive line. That line held by the end of the day and on the night of December 31, 1862, Rosecrans called a council of war. His subordinates crowded his tent, seated in chairs and on the ground. Thomas napped in his chair while the discussion took place. Retreat was discussed, then Rosecrans woke Thomas and asked, will you protect the rear on a retreat to Overalls Creek? Thomas stated simply, this army can't retreat, and went back to sleep. We will never know if this comment was a sign of boldness or simply stating fact, but it was true. Retreat would have been difficult. Confederate cavalry had gotten into the baggage trains in the rear. The Union army was somewhat cut off, and the only option was to fight. The next day, no attack came. On January 2nd, late in the day, the Confederates attacked the Union left, 
but were held off and badly wounded by well-placed Union artillery. Part of Negley's division of Thomas's command launched a small counterattack, but the rebels were on the run. The Confederate army would leave the field, relinquishing it to Rosecrans and the Army of the Cumberland. As one of Thomas's biographers stated, Thomas's actions at Stones River significantly helped the Union Army stave off disaster. Thomas deserves credit for sending Walker's brigade to assist the 9th Michigan in provost duties. With the right wing routed, it must have been tempting to rush Walker's brigade directly into the battle when it arrived on the field at 10 a.m. Instead, Thomas planned for the long term, using Walker's troops to rally men who would be needed later in the day. Stones River stands out as demonstrating the excellent military abilities of Thomas and it would foreshadow his future military successes.